If you would stand with me and turn in your Bible to Daniel, the third chapter. We will read from verses... set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Jesus. who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with, weight, with rage, Nebuchadnezzar announced, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us. From your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your God or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Amen. 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 I want to use uh, for a subject this morning. Determined. Determined. <laughs> Determined. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, here we are. Now at the hour of the preached word. And as you know, oh Lord, there have been some complications, but we know, God, that you're more than able. You're more than able to put everything back together. So we just ask your presence, your power, and your spirit in this hour of the preacher. Have your way, O oh gracious God. Have your way in this place. Move me and use me as an instrument of your peace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Our soul says, Amen. 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 Determine. We thank God that we made it through another year. By the grace of God, we have survived another year full of mass shootings, murders and kidnappings, human trafficking, natural disasters. We have escaped floods, fires, we have survived cancers and blood, foodborne illnesses. Jesus. We have made it. Jesus. In spite of a government mm. that has lined the pockets of the rich mm. at the expense of the poor, yeah, right. mm -hmm. that has attacked public education, uh -huh. rolled back food stamp eligibility, uh -huh. gutted health care funding, Dismiss regulations that protect our environment. Employed regressive trade policies. 
uh -huh, that have burdened our industries and our pockets. It has stacked the Supreme Court and the federal courts with conservative judges, a government that has advanced policies that promote racial hatred in our country, disunity among our allies, and motivation for our foreign enemies. But through it all, God has kept us. Yes. Through it all. And I am thankful. I'm thankful. And given with that, you, our president did on just the other day, we're going to need that same kind of protection in this new year. But I'm grateful that God sees all, hears all, knows all, Amen. and still has control of everything yes. in the palm of his hand. Amen. And while I am grateful, I'm also mindful that I made some commitments mm -hmm. at the start of 2019 that I did not keep. How about you? Amen. 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 Some of the commitments are the same ones I made the year before and the year before that. I'm going to walk through some that might be familiar. And if I come down your street, don't slam the door. Back the door open and wave at a brother. Last year, I was going to lose some of this weight. Last year. Go exercise a little more. Yeah. Work out a little more. Come on, there you go. <laughs> Give me a Fitbit and walk a little more. Yeah, boy. Last year, Last year. I was going to eat better. Oh, Put down them cookies oh. and them cakes. Oh. Quit drinking up them sodas. Oh. Last year, Last year. was going to give up that alcohol. That's Come on, wave at me. <laughs> Last year, yeah. going to quit smoking. Oh, Gonna go back to school. Oh, Last year. Yeah. Gonna work on my anger issues. Yes. Boost my self-esteem. Yes. Last year. Yes. I said I was gonna improve my prayer life. Yes. Last year. Mm -hmm. I said I'm gonna come to church every Sunday. Yes. Attend Bible study. Yes. Attend prayer service. Last year. Yes. I said I'm gonna tie. I'm going to pay my offering. I'm going to pay my capital improvement. Last year. But here we are. Come on. At the start of a new year. The start of a new decade. And we are still struggling with some of the same issues. What? We started out pretty good. But by February, March, the committee went by the boards. And we were right back where we were at the close of 2018. Not because we didn't mean what we said, but because we did not build in a discipline to support the commitment. That's right. We need to understand that there is no discipline in a commitment. There is no discipline in a resolution. You got to bring discipline to the commitment. That's right. right. That's true. Yes. Amen. 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 See, 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 a commitment is the act of expressing mm -hmm. our intention to do something. Yes. Expressing our feeling about something. Yes. It is committing oneself uh, to promise to a promise or to a course of action. But the commitment itself has no discipline. Just because we say we're going to do it, mm -hmm. just because we say we want to do it, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that we will. Right. That's right. Oh, Jesus. And so some of us at the start of 2020 have made some of these same commitments. We're going to try again. Amen. 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 And I want to help some of us keep them this time. Amen. Amen. Especially those that pertain to our spiritual health. Right and our eternal life. Amen. Amen. I want to help you because God wants you to live better in 2020. 
God wants you to have more. He wants you to live an abundant life. A life full of joy and peace, love and grace. Come on, John, John, John 10, 10, we find Jesus saying, The thief cometh to steal, for to steal, and to kill and destroy. He said, But I have come, come on, that you might have life, have it more abundant. Anybody here interested? Amen. And having an abundant life yes. in 2020. Yes. That is living in your overflow. Yes. Come on right now. Yes. Rather than struggling from day to day hoping right. to on. make it to the sweet by and by. Yes. Yes. Well, I can't speak for anybody but myself. Mm -hmm. But I am convinced that despite the pitfalls and the shortfalls uh -huh. of 2019, mm -hmm. those that were laid up for me and those that were created by me, come on, mm -hmm. I am ready mm -hmm. and positioned to live higher yeah. and to live yes. better Amen. in the Amen. year of 2020. Amen. How about you? Amen. Amen. Yes. Is there anybody here who's ready to make a positive, sustainable, upwardly mobile, spiritual change in your life Amen. in the new year? Amen. If so, say, that's me. That's me. All right now. If that's you, then repeat after me. Say I. I say your full name. Amen. 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 Am not just committed. Am not just committed. But I am determined. I am determined. In 2020. Let's say that again. Say I. I say your name. Am not just committed. But I am determined. But I am determined. In 2020. All right. Amen. 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 If this year is going to be different from last year, Jesus. making a commitment will not be enough. If we're going to make the changes that we purpose in our lives, if we're going to collaborate with God in this new year and invest in our quality of living, then we have got to put some teeth in our commitment mm -hmm. by being determined. Right. Amen. Say determined. Determined. Uh -huh. determined is more than commitment. When you are determined, whatever the issue is, it's resolved. That's right. It's settled. You have made an authoritative or a conclusive decision. You have reasoned ascertain, observe, weigh, and decide on a fixed course of action. Amen. When you are determined, you are resolute, you're staunch, you're settled, you're inflexible, you're unfaltering, unwavering. In short, your mind is made up and nothing or nobody is going to change it. Whatever you committed to will be done if you build in some discipline uh -huh. and are determined. Uh -huh. Now, I know it's true. Because I smoked for 32 years. Uh -huh. Smoked a pack a day for most of them. Uh -huh. And I just knew after trying year after year to quit smoking Jesus. that I was going to simply die of smoking. Uh -huh. I couldn't kick it. Couldn't shake it. Uh -huh. And then... I became pastor. And something in my spirit said, how are you going to minister to Sister Baskerville? How are you going to pray for the mother of your church and you smell like an ashtray? It struck my spirit. And around about that same time, I read a Chinese proverb that said, uh, rather than waste your energy trying to quit, quit. say quit, <laughs> and use that energy for something else. Right. Right. Makes sense to me. Come on, preacher. Because I was always trying. I was always trying. I made myself tired trying, and I would quit trying. Stop trying. Quit. <laughs> Make a decision. Yes. That's right. To quit and then use that energy to do something else. All right. 
You got to be determined. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to be tugged on. That decision was 17 years ago. And every now and again, I still have an urge for a cigarette. But I remind myself, that was determined long time ago that I was done. And I'm going to stick with my decision. I am determined. That's what the three Hebrew boys teach us in this text. That if you're going to overcome trials and tribulations and pitfalls, if you're going to continue to be the one that God called you to be, you have got to be determined. Yes. To fully appreciate these boys' determination, you got to know their stories. Amen. Come on now. These boys were Israelites. Yeah. They are God's chosen people. Uh -huh. Descendants of Abraham and heirs to the promises of God. Come on. Uh -huh. They were living in Jerusalem, yeah. in the Mecca, on God's holy hill. They worshiped at Alfred, I'm not Alfred Street, they worshiped at the temple that Solomon built. Yeah, come on now. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that they were of royal family. Yeah, yeah. They were of the tribe of Judah. Yeah, Jesus' tribe. Uh -huh. yeah. They were of the nobility. That they were young, handsome men without physical defect. Well versed in every branch of wisdom, endowed with knowledge and competent to serve in the king's palace. In short, these boys had it going on. They were living, but suddenly without warning, their lives were turned upside down. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, besieged Jerusalem, burned down their city, tore down their temple, and deported thousands of their brothers and sisters to Babylon. And they were in the number. But because of their royalty and their God-given gifts, they were made to serve in the king's court, uh -huh. the court of their conqueror. Mm -hmm. And immediately, that old king, Nebuchadnezzar, attempted to steal their culture, corrupt their diet, change their name with the goal of changing their allegiance to their God. We ought to be able to relate to these brothers. Come on now. When we look at our history, we know that this is not our native land. Now we were citizens of a great land. We too were born of nobility. We had a rich culture in West Africa and in Central Africa. A healthy diet, and a rich relationship with our God. Yeah. But we were sold and deported here by Portuguese, yeah. British, French, Spanish, Dutch, and Danish kings who saw us as cargo, property, and not a people. They attempted to steal our culture, destroy our faith, corrupt our diet, and even change our name in an attempt to erase our history and our allegiance to our God. Right. And if the truth be told, the whitewashing of our identity has been effective. Come on here. Some of us have forgotten the strong bond of community that we had. Many of us have forgotten our teachings and our traditions. Some of us have forgotten the strong work ethic that we brought to this place. The strong bond of brotherhood. Some of us have even forgotten our strong dependence that we had on our God. That's right. I hold these truths right. to be self-evident. Right. Look at the rate of black-on-black -black crime yeah. in our community. Mm -hmm. It is evident by the high number of murders in our cities. It is evident by the lack of community building that goes on among us when we got all this money in our community. It is evident by the falling away of the faithful from the church. There are great similarities between us, our experience, and those of the Hebrew boys. However, we need to take a page out of their books, for they triumphed in their trials. 
They did not let their captor corrupt their moral character. If you look further in the text, King Nebuchadnezzar builds this idol god made out of gold, uh -huh. 125 feet high, 12 and a half feet wide, set it up in the plain uh, of Dura and commanded that when the music plays, I want everybody to just bow down and worship this thing. He said, if anybody fails to do so, I'm going to throw you in a furnace. A great fiery furnace. What I love about this text, Reverend, Come on now. is that these three Hebrew boys remind us that no matter what the enemy does to you, no matter what the government throws at you, no matter what the devil designs to defeat you, you can retain your dignity, keep your integrity, support your community, and serve your God. You just need some spiritual discipline and a divine determination. What discipline and divine determination did these boys have? Well, this is what we're going to talk about over the next several weeks. But I thought that I would leave you, with you this morning simply this. These boys were determined to remain faithful to their covenant relationship with God. They were determined to remain faithful to the covenant relationship that they had with God. They determined and they decided that the relationship that they enjoyed with God was the most important thing in their lives. That it would be the rock, that it would be the discipline upon which they would stand. This relationship was summarized in the Ten Commandments. The word God spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai after delivering the people from Egyptian bondage. Who in here knows that the reading of the word of God is a spiritual discipline that we must have? Who in here is exercising that spiritual discipline every day? Come on now. Amen. Amen. Yeah. On Mount Sinai, God wrote with his finger on two stone tablets these words. Words that need to resonate even in our spirit. God said, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. And out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. These Hebrew boys determined in their spirit that the word of God, the law of God yeah. and their relationship with God uh -huh. superseded everybody yeah. and everything in their lives. Yeah. They had determined to be guided by the law that said, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, yeah. with all thy soul, yeah. with all thy mind, with all thy strength. Yeah. They were determined to stand on the word of God and allow nothing to break their relationship with him. And I'm just crazy enough to believe this morning that if we let the word of God and our relationship with God be our guide and our standard. Uh -huh. If we too keep the laws of God as our guiding principle, in the year of our Lord 2020, uh -huh. we will be more than conquerors yes. in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. That's true. There won't be a habit we can't break. That's right. yes. A relationship we can't fix. Yes. An illness we cannot endure. Yes. A promise we cannot keep. Right. If the word of God and our relationship with God is the bedrock of every thought and every move, if God's will for our lives is paramount in our thinking and in our planning, yes. everything we do yes. shall prosper. Yes. In every trial we encounter, yes. we're meant to be a stepping stone in our climb to righteousness. Yes. The yes. Hebrew boy's greatest strength yes. was their belief in their God, yes. which was fueled by their relationship with God. Yes. They had a history right. with God. Yes. And they knew because of his word and the history that they had with him 
They can trust God no matter what. Is anybody in here a disciplined reader of the word of God? Does anybody in here have any history with God? Come on. Has God paced the floor with you in the midnight hour? Come on. When your mind was all messed up and your hope was gone. Has he walked with you through the valley of the shadow of death and dried your eyes when mama died and when daddy died? Has he paid your bills when you didn't have a job? Did he feed your family when you were down to your last dime? Did he eat your dress when you couldn't pay attention? Did he speak to your child when you didn't have the words to say? Has he ever fought your battle in a conservative courtroom? Has he ever been your doctor? In the sick room. I just want to know, do you have any history? If you have history with God, yes. and you know the word of God, yes. when the world tries to bend your wheel, come on, and cause you to bow down to these uh -huh. little gods of this life, yes. to pollute your body, yes. to mess up your mind, yes. to destroy your self-esteem, yes. to compromise your integrity yes. and your relationship with your God, you ought to have the spiritual strength. And the spiritual temerity, come on here, to look your adversary in the eye and declare like the Hebrew boys, I'm not careful to answer you in this matter. You can do what you want. Say what you will. You can take your best shot. But the God I serve is more than able to deliver me out of your hands. In fact, we will deliver me.
I'm making a decision. Amen. Yesterday is gone. Yes. Tomorrow is not promised, but right now, yes. today, yes. I have decided yes. I'm going to serve my God. Yes. I'm going to exercise some disciplines. Some spiritual disciplines that will help me stay grounded. When the wind blows, when the storm comes, it's coming. It's coming. And the more we determine to stand firm, the heart is going to blow. But if you exercise your disciplines, if you read your word, if you worship your God, if you determine in your spirit, that I'm going with God all the way. Can't no devil in hell <laughs> keep you from your appointed ground. Yeah. Amen. Don't the church are open. If there's anybody here this morning.